Joining us now is Chris Verone, head of technical analysis and a partner of Strategus, which is a Baird company. Chris, great to see you. Hey, Melissa. So 36-36 is in the history books. 36-26 is yeah. where we are right now in terms of lows. What's the next level to watch? Well, it's lower. I mean, there's some modest support in, say, 3,500 neighborhood. But really, our kind of view all year has been that the market is going back to where it was pre-COVID. And, you know, that's 31, 32, 3,300 S&P. I, I think those are levels that we have to circle. You know, our big issue here is the market's just not that oversold. Uh, right now, the S&P is about 12% below its 200-day moving average. Historically, you need to get that closer to 20, 25% below the 200 to make a big oversold call. That's what we saw at the 1970 low, the 74 low, the 02 low, the 09 low. So I think it's early to make a big oversold call. The top of the market here, I think, is really where the risk is. I mean, look at the stocks that broke down first. It was Microsoft below its June low two or three weeks ago. It was Google below its June low two or three weeks ago. So this is very, very top heavy here. I don't think we're through it. So is the is the further breakdown going to be driven by those those biggest stocks in yeah. the S&P 500? Because the complaint on the fundamental side, Chris, is that we haven't seen sort of that that next shoe to drop when it comes to guidance from a lot of these companies. From Microsoft, we haven't heard about yeah. um, enterprise demand slowing, for instance. And so maybe there is further weakness ahead. What do you see in the charts? But when you look at the progression of this bear market, right? This began in spring of. 2021 with the ARC stocks. And then they hit what we called the almost fangs, the names that were once considered to be fangs, but really never quite in that same conversation. Now they're going after the fangs. So I think the, the, the stocks that drive us lower from here over the next number of months uh, are your big waves. I think it's Apple. I think it's Microsoft. I think it's Google. I think AMD. I think it's NVIDIA. You know, bear markets are a function of price and time. There are certainly a lot of stocks here down a lot, but we really haven't been in this from a time perspective, I think, long enough. So whether you agree with me on the next 300 S&P points up or down, what I think the bigger story is time. This will take time, I think, measured in quarters, maybe years to repair so many broken charts that are out there. Uh, in a world, Chris, in which the S&P 500 does go to 31, 3200, are there sectors, are there stocks here that are relatively defensive or is everything off the table? on that sort well, I think, of trip lower. I think the trick here is, you know, it's almost shades of fall of 08 where what led you lower, kind of that climactic move lower, were the defensive groups that were viewed as untouchable. I remember the you know, summer and fall of 08, it was Walmart and Exxon that really dragged you lower. So I think you got to be careful with some of the defensive groups here. A lot of money has moved into staples and utilities. Uh, they are crowded. They're not particularly attractive from a valuation perspective. And in that final phase of the bear market, it tends to be when they hit the very defensive groups. And, you know, you look at some of these staples or utilities, they're still outperforming, but only because they're going down less, right? If you look back earlier in the year, they were outperforming and going up. That's changed. This is now just a relative story. So I do think there's risk to some of these defensive groups uh, going forward. Shades of 08 sent shivers down my spine, Chris. Uh, good to speak with you, nonetheless. You too. <laughs> Chris Verone.